Hey guys, it's Mike Taylor, owner and developer at RC Max. Now we've been producing engines now for a couple of years, uh, developing and improving upon the D Dawson design. And things have been going really well. But at the same time as we've been carrying on with production, about 18 months ago, I started a project to develop the ultimate big bore RC engine. Now there was no time limit, no budget, it's just been ticking away. And I'm very, very excited to say that today is the day that I get to show you what I've been up to. So let's not mess around. The RC Max reed valve. This was the first step towards creating a proper custom RC engine. You guys already know about it. It's already been released. It, it is a great addition and we've had some awesome feedback from guys that have fitted it and um, compared it to their previous stage six reed valve. It's molded to fit the case, no more grinding down scooter reed valves, a nice step forward. It was released because we finished it well ahead of schedule and it seemed rude not to, to let you guys enjoy it. So that was that. Now, the next component, which uh, is, is a brand new release, is we have our own fully custom RC Max crankshafts. Obviously, we've got a four different cranks for, the, uh, for, for all the different engines. I've got three of them here now, the 36.6, 39.6, and the 45 millimeter crank. You can see this big bad boy, the, the, the stroke is real long there and the rod sticks out. Um, these cranks are lighter, they are better balanced, and importantly, the, we had a rod made um, to suit the, uh, the bearing requirements we wanted. I, I wasn't happy with the bearings we've been using before, and I've seen some failures on a few different brands. So the, this, this really is to suit the RPM range of an RC engine, which um, is, is a big step forward in reliability. So the crankshaft gives us the, the base and the reliability to, to obviously make more power and, and make, it, um, make it reliable. So <clears throat> that's quite important there. Now, the next piece of the puzzle is, is the biggest piece, and it's the reason why you guys must be wondering, 18 months, how long does it take to make an engine? Well. This is the, the, the main part of it and why it's taken so long. I am very, very pleased to say that we have our own RC Max custom Supreme cylinder. This bad boy makes everything else just look subpar. I mean, I can give you a guarantee, dyno proven guarantee, that this is the most powerful cylinder available. It is the only cylinder available that is designed for big bore RC. And the biggest challenge that we faced is scooter cylinders. We've tested them all. Um, we've tested, you know, Sage 6 that we use currently, Polini, Molossi. They're all great cylinders for what they're designed for, i.e., you know, high-powered scooters with a CVT transmission. They make power in quite a narrow power band because their automatic um, transmission is, is designed to hold them at that RPM and then accelerate the scooter without actually changing the RPM. The, the, the speed of the, the scooter goes, goes up because the transmission keeps slowly adding gears um, through the belt drive. Now we have the opposite situation with RC. We have a fixed gearbox, a single ratio, and then a dog clutch. So the clutch dumps in, the engine's got to sort of pick up and move away and then try and rev out as high as possible while making an efficient spread of power across the RPM range. And we, I just certainly was not happy with having to keep modifying scooter cylinders, trying to port them as best as possible to get the compromise. And, and, and compromise was never the idea with this project. So the reason the cylinder came about and the reason that this is the basis for the whole project is it gives me the ability to give you a wide power band, extremely high peak power, and the, 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 obviously the important thing is we don't, we've got modern technology inside a proper air-cooled cylinder. So we don't have any power fade issues, um, but we've got quite an, an up-to-date, modern, fresh port design. Um, huge exhaust port, as you can see there, lots and lots of width on the exhaust port to get the, uh, the high peak power. Um, we've got the blowdown just right to suit, the, to suit the RC engines. That was really, really critical and something that I just couldn't get with the, the scooter racing cylinders. So anyway, th th this is a, a huge step forward. I'm not expecting all of you to understand the, 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 the cost, both mentally and financially, but th this means a huge deal to me. So I'm, I'm very, very excited about that. Now with more power, obviously you've got to, you've got to up everything else to, to, to suit it and reliability. So we made some updates, um, quite significant uh, updates in terms of engineering to the, the RC Max crankcase. This is the, for, for those guys that don't know about Big Bore RC, 
This is our RC Max crankcase. Um, <coughs> it's an evolved version of the original Dawson case. The vents in the clutch housing, they've been moved back here to allow cool, fresh air in behind the clutch system, um, which is quite important because we have a new clutch back plate. Now this back plate has proper angled fins on it to create a positive airflow um, from, the, from the back of the, the engine over the clutch and out through the front. So all the heat from the clutch is being pushed away from the engine. It's not increasing the heat of the block and therefore the engine. It's also keeping the clutch at a consistent temperature so it operates evenly from start to finish of your bash. You know, it doesn't matter whether you have a 10 minute session and run out of fuel, at the end of the session, you're gonna get a similar performance to when you started, which is something that everyone suffers um, across Big Bore RC. We've got our, um, our new clutch springs, which we've been testing. Now, I don't think this is a surprise to everybody because um, we've actually been testing these with nearly 25 people. So there's been pictures posted now and again, and we've solved the problem where we had a few um, springs break in the past with certain engines. It appears to be a resonance thing. Certain motors just had a, an awkward resonance and the hard material that we were using snapped occasionally. So we've got a much tougher material um, it really is a, is a big step forward in terms of reliability. So that's a, that's a great upgrade that's gonna come. Now, the, this case is for what we're calling the sort of the first tier of the Supreme engines. So the 55 and 65 cc will be built and running on this, this crankcase. Um, they're gonna be using the, the final developed version of the RC Max 62 millimeter clutch. And um, that, that's gonna be so we're still using the Zenoa four bolts. So this fits in any car that can take a big bore will, will still fit the 55 and 65. Now the problem is with the, what we're calling the second tier, the 71 plus, and I say plus because there is a change, um, our Supreme cylinder, now this is being used across the board 55 plus. So what that means is I'm using the lightweight 47.6 millimeter piston. We're no longer making the 90 GT. If someone wants the 90 GT, I'll build one, not a problem, but we have a superior option now. We have a, an 80 Supreme. And um, the 71 and 80, they're just way too powerful for the 62 millimeter clutch. Um, we, we've had to, well, we've experimented with quite a lot of different clutches, to be honest. And I've tried steel clutches, 70 um, to 90 millimeter, and I've had a lot of problems with heat. Um, it, when you throw more and more power at things, obviously there has to be a failure and unfortunately the clutch has been suffering. So we, we've, um, we've broken quite a lot in testing and eventually gone away from steel. Now let's, um, let's get straight to the good stuff. This is our new clutch system for the 71 and 80. It is a 110 millimeter clutch, fully Kevlar matrix shoes. Uh, I've worked with someone over here, not far from, from here actually, who's um, helped us get this lining onto these shoes so that we had our own, our own suitable shoe for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the sort of RC application. Fully adjustable, however, when I say fully adjustable, that does not mean you have to keep adjusting it. I know that that's been feedback that's been passed to me through other manufacturers. You should not have to be adjusting your clutch all the time because it's changing, and this will not happen. This will stay consistent. If you set it at 10,000 RPM, it will stay at 10,000 RPM, and, um, that, that, that's a really important thing for me because I know a lot of guys are put off by adjustability. So that does not need to affect you. If you want to adjust it, be my guest. You've got unlimited adjustment. You've, we've got all these different colored springs that we've, uh, we've come up with. Um, yellow is the strongest, red is the next one down. But you will also notice we've got dual springs. Now I'm running a small spring up inside the big spring a bit similar to uh, modern motorcycles use in high RPM uh, valve trains. So they run dual springs to prevent uh, valve bounce at high RPM. We're doing a similar thing here. The, the dual springs prevent um, inconsistencies in engagement RPM. So where the shoe is slamming out against the bell, it doesn't sort of bounce back at all. It just stays there consistent. And when you drop 50 RPM below the engagement, she'll start to pull back. And the, the springs are kind of working with each other to create an extremely consistent engagement RPM. So when you set your clutch, you get the RPM you want, you've, you've got it, it's locked down, it's done. So that, that is great. 7075 backplate, um, as I say, the Kevlar shoes. It's actually fairly lightweight. 
um, it's it's not much heavier than other systems, other big systems that are out there on the market, which I think was was quite an important um, design sort of goal for me because weight is very very important, especially when this is hanging off your crankshaft. So that that's a big thing. The adjuster bolts at the minute you're looking at steel. I just want to make you aware that the production versions are titanium, so we're saving about another three and a half grams there, which is quite critical on the weight of the shoes, and that um, helps with the RPM. Uh, as I say, we've got lots of different spring options. These aren't going to be expensive either. So if you want to play with different springs, you, you can you can get stuck into that. I've got the the absolutely enormous hard steel bell. Uh, I've got a 54 millimeter bell here to compare for you. That is the um, that is a bit of size comparison there of the new system. I mean, as I say, it, it's 110 millimeters. It's we're not messing around. We've got a lot of power, so we, we've got to come up with a clutch to suit it. So, let's show you the engine. Now this thing is pretty special. I'm very, very pleased with this. This is the RC Max 110 millimeter crankcase system. 7075 uh, clutch carrier, uh, 7075 gear plate. This is a four millimeter thick gear plate. And the reason that this comes free with the engine when you have a, a Baja or hybrid one, this will also fit the Lossy 5T by the way. I'll get onto that in just a second. We've changed the gear ratio. You're used to 74 tooth gears. We're now on 88 tooth gears, just because we've actually moved the whole engine across and up a little bit to get the clutch to fit in up against the Baja transmission. So this clutch housing here at the back of it, the, the, the lay shaft basically sits from half a millimeter from the back of the clutch. You cannot go any bigger with what we've done with this particular change. Um, and then the actual, the, the gearbox just sits in here and for once now we've got rid of the clearance issue. The, your case is not gonna rub the back of the engine. That's that's gone because we've, we've got about a five millimeter air gap now. So that's um, that's all good. <clears throat> now the, I just wanna show you all around the engine. Obviously everything, all RC Max engines now come with the billet starter on the new the new design. So that's a um, nice little thing. We've got the RC Max crank in there. You can just about see the, the branding on the rod with our new um, improved bearings. We've tweaked the internals of the crankcase just to suit the cylinder um, so that everything matches nicely. Um, obviously, we're still using our um, same profile on the, the read intake there. That works very, very well. But yeah, that is that is the new monster. So 71 and 80. If someone really wanted me to build a 65, say, for example, because they love the 65, but they want to build on these crankcases, then just get in touch. We, we can do that. I want to be flexible. Um, You'll notice on the, the gear plate there that um, we've got a bearing in here. So, so the actual, and these two bolts are further apart. So the, the support that this offers um, as, a, as a 7075 four millimeter back plate easily makes up for the fact that we've got rid of the, the top transmission bolt. I mean, that's gone, but hey, it, we, we've, we've got the strength back here now, so it doesn't matter. You need to, to modify your top transmission plate and your brake mount. I'll, sh I'll show that in detail later on pictures and videos. Um, for now, I just want to show you what we've been doing. As I say, this will fit in the Lossy 5T. I've got a different clutch carrier that then mounts to the Lossy chassis. You have got to remove your rear uh, fuel tank mount, and we're looking into making a billet fuel tank mount that, that comes up underneath a fuel tank and supports it. I don't really think it's necessary. I've been testing without one, but if you guys want it, we'll do it, no problem. In the Baja, we have to have a different chassis. Um, Dean at Bonehead has made us a five millimeter thick um, extended chassis. So this just allows us to push the, the fuel tank away from the engine basically and so it can fit in. That's a nice little piece there. And we've got a, a matching um, carbon fiber coil bracket, which obviously then takes into account the engine movement and so mounts to the chassis. Um, what else have we got? These are like the new 88 tooth gear ratios. It's just an example there. We're gonna have some solid spurs made as well if you guys want them, so that's not a problem. I've uh, got a clutch puller. Obviously that's just gonna suit the new clutch system when it's um, mounted in here. You can just bot up the three bolt holes and pull it straight off. But yeah, I mean, that, that goes in there. And uh, the beauty of Kevlar is it just doesn't generate the same amount of heat. Where you've got the Kevlar rubbing on the steel, and as I say, the, this Kevlar matrix is, is a properly designed clutch material. It, it doesn't generate the heat that steel on steel does, and you don't get the, the issues with, that um, come about with steel clutches. So we're so excited about this. I mean, I hope you guys can uh, get into it when you see it. There is one other fairly important change. Um, with going to the Supreme range, we've got our 40, 
46 and 50 GT engines, and they are kind of our first step up from 34s. Super reliable, bashable, great motors. We've got the 55, 65 Supreme, really high-end stuff, you know, gonna be absolute screamers, perfect for, for the sort of lossy 5T. I think the 55 is gonna be a sweet lossy engine, personally. If you really want a monster, we've obviously got this, um, the 71 and 80 Supreme. Now, all of the engines, doesn't matter if it's a GT or a Supreme, are gonna come with titanium pipes as standard. We've, we, we've been so pleased with working with titanium. The weight saving is roughly half a kilo per pipe, which I mean is a significant amount on an RC car. So we, we're gonna be tight. That's our vector pipe. This is our lossy pipe, which has actually been updated very recently, the last uh, month or so. We've got much more bracing on here where some of the steel part pipes broke. We never actually broke a titanium one, but we've braced it anyway. We've obviously got the adjustment on there to suit the, um, the, the 110 millimeter case and also the, the gear ratios. We've still got the silencer on here and we've also got a lot more, we've changed the shape at the front here. We've got a lot more clearance here. The, the, the pipe has a lot more clearance to the head. We've took a lot of feedback on that and it fits, um, it fits in, the, in, the, uh, in the car a lot better as well. So that's, that's been great. And by popular request, we now have a new titanium side pipe for the Baja and Hybrid. I know you guys have asked this many, many times, but I've just been too busy with my, uh, with my 110 millimeter project to, to get onto this. But basically we've got two different headers. We've got a Baja and a hybrid one. Um, and the, the, they, they both basically let, the, let us fit the titanium belly perfectly in each car. The hybrid one moves the belly out a little bit in the car so that it mounts to the servo mount. And the Baja one brings the pipe as tight as we possibly can down the side of the engine and down the side of the car. So this will fit in any cage on the market. Um, and obviously it's unsilenced because of room. Um, and this also is the most powerful pipe on the market. I've done, done the dyno work. This has not been a rush project. So because the engine and the cylinders took so long, I've had plenty of time to develop on this. We've took as much as we possibly could from the Tony Green pipe and, and kept that in the design here. It's a nice snug fit. Oh, I'm making myself look an idiot. Here we go. That's um, a nice snug fit. And you've got, this is the Baja one actually. So that's just coming down the side of the motor there. You can imagine here, obviously the cylinder's not on. That's just coming down the side of here. I'm down the wrong way. Getting excited. Um, and this, this will fit in any, any cage. It's the TSK cage, the SX5 cage, the whole works. And then the hybrid one fits differently, so. That's where we've been, uh, we've been been going with that. I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, I hope you guys um, can give us your feedback. And um, I've got a lot of videos from testing. Um, some of the early videos, I'm sure you're probably gonna be aware that I made a lot of mistakes on the, the early versions of the cylinder. And um, I had some real peaky cylinders, I had some flat cylinders, and as I say, a huge amount of different mold changes have gone on to get the final, the final piece, but it's, uh, it's here now and I'm very, very excited to show it to you. So that's where it is. I'm also gonna go, uh, post up plenty of pictures. One last thing I'd like to do is say a big thanks to everyone that's helped me testing. Um, I, I'm sorry if I forget your names, but Rodney Nixon, that was January, 2018, that Rodney first tested a cylinder for me. I, I remember Willie Joyner saying to, saying to me in a message that he'd uh, spotted something different was, was different about Rodney's engine. So he, he, was, um, he was on the ball there, but Luckily, he didn't share it with anybody, so we've kept the, kept the secret for as long as we possibly could. Um, Rodney, I've had Darren helping me a huge amount, Darren Longford. Uh, ben Sinclair's been amazing. Tommy Hewer, he helped me in the early days. He's been busy recently. Um, more, more lately, Norm LaMarche, he's, he's helped me a lot. In fact, he's running a, a 55 at the moment. Um, he's he's going to be shooting some videos in the next couple of weeks. And Matt Richards, he's been brilliant um, re recently. He's, he's now got a 50, 65, sorry. In a, in a vector, so hopefully he's gonna get us some videos there. So there's about five or six Supreme final prototype engines out there. I'm about to go on holiday for a couple of weeks, so I'm gonna rely on those guys to be posting up pictures. The machining work and everything's being finished while I'm away, so hopefully we'll get back and we can start production and, and discuss if anybody would like to place an order. But um, this is the new standard of RC Max. This is where we're going moving forward. So thanks a lot, guys.